Journal Citation Reports 2023 Clarity Advances, or, or excuse me, Clarity Advances Research. My name is Brian Costello, Marketing Manager here at Clarivate, and I'm excited to be joined by my colleagues, Kate Heaney, Lead Product Manager here at Clarivate, and Nandita Quaderi, Editor-in-Chief and Vice President of Web of Science, also at Clarivate. And with that, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Kate and Nandita. Hey, great. Thank you, Brian. Uh, so again, so my name is Kate Heaney, and I am the Lead Product Manager for the JCR. So we have some exciting updates to share with you today. So I will begin with an overview of the JCR, then hand it over to Nandita for an update on the policy changes that you'll see this year, and then close out the session with a description of how the changes actually look in product. As Brian said, we'll have time at the end for Q&A, so be sure to submit your, uh, your questions in the chat. So let's get started with an overview of the JCR. So the JCR is the home of our journal metrics. We provide a comprehensive suite of metrics, including the journal impact factor, which we'll be talking a lot about today, for each journal indexed in the Web of Science core collection to help you evaluate a journal within the context of its field. We're also going to be talking a lot about context. It can help researchers find journals to publish in, help librarians decide which publications they need to subscribe to in order to support their faculty and staff, and help publishers evaluate their portfolio. Next slide, please. So the JCR is an annual report that distills citation trend data from the Web of Science core collection to help you understand journal performance providing you with the transparent, publisher-neutral data and statistics that you need to make confident decisions about journals across your institution. For nearly 50 years, the scholarly community has relied on the JCR as an authoritative source for journal metrics, and we take that role very seriously. Each year, we do extensive analysis to ensure that the data are accurate, objective, and complete including screening for anomalous citation activity. Journals displaying evidence of excessive self-citation and citation stacking have their GIFs suppressed from the journal citation reports to support research integrity in scholarly publishing. And suppressions are not the only way that the JCR supports research integrity. You can view citation metrics alongside descriptive open access statistics, and contributor information that provide you with multiple ways to think about a journal's impact and influence, and really drill down into the article data that underlies the journal impact factor to better understand the relationship between article and journal citations. Next slide, please. So there's been a rapid growth in published output over the past several years. Alongside this trend, we're also witnessing the rising tide of journals with questionable publishing practices. The Economist reported that there are at least 13,000 predatory journals worldwide in 2020. So researchers need tools that will guide them to trustworthy publishing venues, and we are developing the journal impact factor as well as the journal citation reports with this in mind. Next slide, please. So we are focused on providing content, data, and metrics that you can trust in the face of these negative trends. We curate the Web of Science core collection and journal citation reports so you can be confident that you are consulting trustworthy quality sources. We curate our collection. Only journals that pass our rigorous selection process are included in the Web of Science core collection or journal citation reports. You'll hear a little bit more about this a little bit later on from Nandita. We curate our data, standardization of author names and affiliations, including addresses for improved unification and aggregation, and standardization and consistency of document types across more than 21,000 journals. And lastly, we curate our metrics. 
like I said, we suppress journal impact factors for journals. If we detect citation anomalies that report, excuse me, that result in a journal impact factor that doesn't accurately reflect the journal's contribution to the scholarly network. Next slide, please. So we're invested in providing guidance on responsible research assessment. So for example, when data about researchers and their institutions are squeezed into a simplified metric or league table, a lot of information is lost. In 2019, the ISI dove into this topic and presented visualizations that unpack the richer information beneath an indicator. The title of the report on the left is Profiles Not Metrics, which really sums up some key concepts we talk about when evaluating a journal. Each journal in the JCR has a profile page, which contains that suite of metrics showing not just the citation impact of a given journal, but also placing it within the context of its field. Citation patterns vary from category to category. So what demonstrates impact in anthropology may look different for virology. And it's really important to take that full view of a journal within that context. The ISI recently released a second report, just recently, uh, called Unpacking Research Profiles, Moving Beyond Metrics. The report focuses on four key indicators at researcher, journal, institutional, and research field levels. For individuals, what is excessive self-citation? This is a matter of increasing concern when dubious publications appear to be proliferating and the validity of research publication statistics is under challenge. For journals, can we identify characteristics that typify groups and extend analysis beyond the GIF? And for international collaboration, can we account for the citation boost that collaboration gives and display the outcome in a way that enables ready interpretation and management response? For future planning, most bibliometric data are retrospective, but can we get closer to the current research fronts and identify the topics, institutions, and researchers making a mark now? Both of these reports are available for download on the Clarivate website. So the JCR has been around since 1975. We've made a number of changes to the JCR over the decades, uh, including a number of key changes in the past several years. In 2015, we introduced additional indicators, such as the GIF percentile. In 2018, we improved transparency on the GIF with the journal profile page. In 2020, we added gold open access information. And in 2021, we launched a new interface, the current interface for the JCR, added profile pages for journals in the Arts and Humanities Citation Index and Emerging Sources Citation Index for the first time, and introduced the Journal Citation Indicator, which I'll talk a little bit about in a, a couple of slides. This year, we are expanding the GIF and completing the profiles for all journals in the Web of Science Core Collection and the JCR. Next slide, please. So here's an example of one of the data points that we have on each profile page. This shows the citation distribution for a journal within a given year, the JCR year, and how many articles were cited once, five times, 10 times, 50 times, displaying that transparency in how a journal has contributed to the scholarly literature. Again, it's important to note that citation distribution can vary by field. The distribution for an oncology journal, for example, will look very different from that of an education journal. So it's really key to evaluate a journal within that context of its field. Next slide, please. So in 2021, we introduced the journal citation indicator. The JCI is a field normalized metric representing the average category normalized citation impact for papers published in the prior three year period. The fact that it is field normalized is key as different fields have different citation patterns, giving you a new tool to compare within and across disciplines. The journal citation indicator is available to all journals in the Web of Science Core Collection, 
and is calculated back to 2017, giving you several years of trend data. So the JCI starts at a baseline of one for a given category, which is the average for that category. Journals that receive twice the average number of citations for that category will have a JCI of two, and a journal with half the average will receive a JCI of 0.5. Again, this is based on a baseline of one, which is considered the average for that category. And this has been calculated for all categories in the JCR. So the GIF and the JCI are two metrics that can be used side by side. Let's take a quick look at the differences. The GIF, which is up top here, is calculated by taking the citations in 2022, the JCR year, two items published in 2020 and 2021. The JCI, by contrast, takes citations from all documents in four years, from 2019 through 2022, to citable items published in three years, 2019, 2020, and 2021, expanding the content that's included. In other words, the JCI counts citations in four years, to citable items published over a period of three years versus citations in one year to items published in the previous two for the journal impact factor. This is particularly meaningful for disciplines that gain the bulk of their citations over a longer period of time. And again, the JCI is field normalized, whereas the GIF is that raw citation number, giving you another tool to evaluate a journal within its given context. And now I will hand it over to Nandita to discuss the policy changes. Thank you, Kate. And hello, everyone. My name is Nandita Kuderi, and I'm the Editor-in-Chief and Vice President of the Web of Science. I lead the Web of Science Editorial Division and have overall responsibility for the policies and the processes that govern the selection of the Web of Science and the inclusion in JCR. If I could have the next slide, please, Jess. So the need for trustworthy data and metrics is growing as research output and fraudulent practices increase. We are committed to supporting research integrity by ensuring that the data in the web of science and the JCR metrics derived from the web of science data are accurate and reliable. Not only do my team of expert in-house editors apply a rigorous evaluation process to select which journals to include in the Web of Science, they periodically reevaluate index journals to determine whether they continue to meet our quality criteria. We've always been responsive to community and to customer feedback when prioritizing which journals to reevaluate. However, as the scholarly record has become increasingly more polluted, we have had to become much more proactive in our approaches. And so at the beginning of this year, we began using a new, internally developed AI tool to help us identify which journals to reevaluate in a more effective manner. And through this process, we identified around 500 journals that needed to be reevaluated. And we dedicated the first three months of this year to these reevaluations. And as a result, over 50 journals have been delisted, have been removed from the web of science. And you can more and you can find more details about this in the blog post shown on the right. Going forward, instead of further intense periods of only doing reevaluations, we'll perform a mixture of new evaluations and reevaluations over the entire course of the year. Our master journal list is the only authoritative source for knowing what's covered in the Web of Science, and we update this every month. From May of this year, we've been publishing a list of coverage changes, including which titles have been added and which have been delisted from the Web of Science for failing our quality criteria. So Kate's already talked about the transparency provided in the JCR and how we suppress the GIF for journals when we observe anomalous citation behavior that doesn't reflect the journal's contribution to the scholarly network. I'd really like to emphasize the important point that suppression 
isn't an accusation of wrongdoing, and it's not intended as a punitive measure. It's simply to ensure the GIF remains a reliable indicator of a journal scholarly impact, and that the value of the GIF isn't distorted by anomalous citation activity. The next slide, please, Jess. In yesterday's JCR release, the GIF was extended to all four journal indices in the Web of Science for the very first time. And as a result of this expansion, we see almost 9,000 more journals from 3,000 publishers getting a GIF for the first time. And we see at least a 5% increase in journals from the Global South that have received a GIF, and an 8% increase in gold open access journals that have a GIF. It's very important to note that even following this expansion, the GIF remains a very selective metric. Less than 20% of submitted journals pass our quality criteria and are able to enter the Web of Science. However, by extending the GIF to all journals that have passed our rigorous quality criteria, we are helping to level the global playing field. And this includes the journals that are recently launched, open access journals, journals with a niche or a regionally focused scope, and journals from the global south. If I could have the next slide, please. So the journal impact factor was introduced in 1975 as a measure of scholarly impact, and it was restricted to journals in the sciences and the social sciences. In that era, there was a limited degree of fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism, but we didn't see the industrial scale levels of fraudulent behavior facilitated by enterprises such as paper mills that we see today. And so although the rapidly growing number of journals back in the 70s made an indicator of scholarly impact valuable, there really wasn't much need of an indicator for trustworthiness 50 years ago. But the scholarly landscape has changed drastically since then. And as fraudulent behavior has intensified, there is a growing need for indicators of trustworthiness. So in order to um, address this need for trust indicators, we've now expanded the GIF from only the most impactful science and social science journals to journals across all disciplines that have passed our rigorous quality evaluation. So what this means is that the GIF is now a journal level indicator of trustworthiness, as well as a measure of scholarly impact. Having a GIF is an indicator of trustworthiness, whereas the numerical value of the GIF continues to be an indicator of a journal scholarly impact. So on the left of this slide, you'll see a representation of the four journal indices in the Web of Science. To enter the multidisciplinary ESCI index, which was launched in 2015, journals must meet our 24 quality criteria. And as I mentioned before, less than 20% of journals pass this step. On the top row, we have the three discipline specific indices. And to enter these, journals must pass our quality criteria, but also our four impact criteria. So until this year's JCR release, only the journals in SCIE and SSCI were eligible to have a GIF. From now on, journals in ESCI and AHCI are also eligible to receive a GIF. And if you want to learn a bit more about this, please do have a look at the two blogs on the right side of the slide. Next slide, please, Jess. Extending the GIF to ESCI and AHCI journals isn't the only policy we've made in this year's release. We've also changed the way dis we display the GIF from three decimal places down to one decimal place. The move to one decimal place will introduce more ties in GIF rank. And we hope this will encourage users to consider additional indicators and descriptive data when comparing journals, which in turn will foster a more holistic understanding of a journal's influence and impact. The increased number of ties 
will affect GIF quartiles. And I'll explain how this works in the next slide. And the extension of the GIF to ESCI and AHCI journals will also affect rankings and therefore quartiles. And so in order to provide transparency on the individual effect of these two changes on GIF rankings and quartiles, we are separating out the interruption and have delayed the inclusion of ESCI and AHCI journals in GIF rankings and quartiles until next year's result um, release. So this year we can just see the effects of going to one decimal place. The changes we're making this year haven't happened in isolation. They are part of an ongoing program to provide complete profiles for all journals indexed in the Web of Science core collection. And we show them, we can see this in the table on the right side of the slide. In the 2021 JCR release, we included ESCI and AHCI journals to the JCR for the very first time. And we also introduced the journal citation indicator. In this year's release, we've extended the GIF to ESCI and AHCI journals, and we're displaying the citation distribution graphs for these collections as well. And finally, in next year's JCR release, we will include ESCI and AHCI journals in GIF rankings and in GIF quartiles. And the next slide, please, Jess. So this brings me to the last slide in this section. And in it, I'd like to explain how the move to displaying the GIF to one decimal place will affect GIF quartiles. So GIF quartiles are calculated according to the number of rank positions in a given category, not simply by looking at the number of journals and dividing evenly into four. So let's start by looking at the left side of the figure. When the GIF was displayed to three decimal places, GIF ties were extremely rare, and the number of rank positions was effectively equal to the number of journals. And so GIF quartiles were evenly sized in terms of both rank position and in terms of the number of journals. On the right side of the slide, we can see what happens following the move to displaying the GIF to one decimal place and the introduction of ties, i.e. multiple journals having the same GIF. The number of rank positions is no longer equal to the number of journals. So quartiles remain evenly sized in terms of rank position, but they are no longer evenly sized in terms of the number of journals. I'd like to end this section with a reminder but it's not good practice to judge anything, including journals, on the basis of just a single measure. And I really do hope that the introduction of GIF ties encourages our scholarly community to consider the range of additional indicators and descriptive data available in the JCR when comparing journals. So now back over to you, Kate. Great. Thanks, Nandita. So now I'm excited to show you what the changes actually look like in product. So just to briefly recap, so the changes that you'll see in the actual JCR product include all journals in the Web of Science core collection receiving a GIF and all GIFs being displayed to one decimal point. So this allows for simplification as well as providing more data for each journal and increasing journal and publisher representation. The number of journals with a GIF will rise from about 12,000 to over 21,000. Um, I'll have more statistics on that in the next slide. It will be about an 8% increase again in gold open access journals that will have received the GIF and so this allows for simplification as well as providing more data for each journal and increasing journal and publisher representation. The number of journals with a GIF will rise from about 12,000 to over 21,000. Um, I'll have more statistics on that in the next slide. It will be about an 8% increase again in gold open access journals that will have received the GIF and at least a 5% increase in journals from the global south that will have received a GIF as well. 
all of which will help you make more informed publication decisions and enable deeper journal analysis. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that 21,000 number. This year's release consists of 21,522 total journals, of which 13,668 are in the sciences, 7,123 in the social sciences, and 3,248 in the arts and humanities. These journals are published out of 112 countries worldwide in all 254 categories that are in the Web of Science and the JCR. Over 5,600 of these journals are gold open access. And of these, 9,136 will receive a GIF for the first time. Next slide, please. All right, so let's actually take a look at what this looks like in product. So while the primary change in this year's release is that extension of the GIF, you'll notice a few changes in the actual interface. First and foremost, the GIF will now display for journals in ESCI and AHCI. Uh, AHCI and ESCI journals have had a profile page in the JCR with 2021 uh, with their JCI, for example, as well as the open access information. And those profiles will now be expanded with the GIF value and that detailed information on citations, same as what has existed for the past several years for journals in uh, SCIE and SSCI. So where we previously displayed an NA, you will now see a value. Note that AHCI and ESCI journals will not be ranked or receive a quartile or uh, percentile until 2024. And this is reflected in product with an NA, same as in previous years. So if you're looking at the Browse Journals page, uh, you will see this under both quartile as well as rank and percentile, which is that screenshot there on the top. If you'd like to evaluate a journal within the context of its category, you can take a look at the quartile for the JCI, uh, which is available for all journals. So additionally, the GIF now displays to the one decimal place instead of the three. And GIFs that would round down to zero with the new one decimal structure will be displayed as less than 0.1. You'll see this on both the Browse Journals page, uh, which is that screenshot on the bottom on the left there, as well as on the journal profile page, which is the version you see on the right. These changes are only for the 2022 metrics that were released yesterday. There are no changes being made to earlier metrics. So if, for example, you take a look at prior years on a journal profile page, or you apply the year filter while browsing journals, you'll still see the GIF to three decimals for journals only that are in SCIE and SSCI. Next slide, please. So in addition to the GIF, the other metrics that we have, like the GIF without self sites, the five year impact factor, and the immediacy index will also be expanded to journals in AHCI, and also appear to one decimal. These are available on each profile page when you look at specific journals. You can also view the calculation overlay for each of these metrics in addition to the overlay for the GIF. Next slide, please. So as we mentioned in the 2024 release, we'll introduce AHCI and ESCI journals to the category rankings. They will not have them this year. We wanted to make this clear for users who are viewing the profile page. So we have some brief explainer text for journals in these two editions that now have a GIF, but don't have a rank or quartile and won't until next year. So the text says that while journals indexed in AHCI and ESCI are receiving a GIF for the first time in June 2023, they will not receive ranks, quartiles, or percentiles until the release of the 2023 data in June 2024. The Learn More link that's in purple at the end of that text uh, will take you out to the blog where we announced this change. Next slide. Okay, so thank you so much again for joining us today. Uh, we hope that this was a helpful overview of this year's release and what you can expect to see in the JCR. So I think we have some time now for some Q&A. 
Okay, thanks, Kate and Indita. Uh, as promised, we'll take the next like 10, 15 minutes or so to answer your questions. If you have a question for Kate or Nandita, please type them into the WebEx chat. And let's get started with the first question. So um, this one's for Nandita. With the journal impact factor being expanded to journals in ESCI, is it possible for a journal in ESCI to have a higher GIF? than those in SCIE or SSCI? Uh, Nandita, you're on mute. I forgot to unmute myself, sorry. So the quick answer is yes, but it won't be common, it'll be rare. So it won't be unexpected to see a small number of ESCI journals with a higher GIF than SCIE, SSCI or AHCI journals in the same category. And that's because inclusion in our flagship collections is not only dependent on the GIF at a given moment in time, but on that journal passing all four of our impact criteria in addition to our quality criteria. And in recent years, our strategy has been to reevaluate ESCI journals that have an estimated journal impact factor that would place them into Q1 or Q2 of the relevant category. However, over the last two years, there has been so much effort and time we've had to spend on re-evaluating index journals that we have decided to prioritise those, re those quality re-evaluations and, re and evaluations of new journals rather than impact re-evaluations. So for those two reasons, it's not going to be unexpected to see some ESCI journals that have a higher gem. Great. Um, so this next one uh, is for Nandita as well. Are the Web of Science quality and impact criteria publicly available? They most certainly are. So perhaps one of my colleagues could share the URL to our editorial website where you can find all our criteria, our policies, the journals, books, and for proceedings. Thank you. I can and see that. You'll chat. see that Kristen just uh, shared that URL in the chat, in the WebEx chat, so check it out. And so we're gonna go over to Kate for this next question. If I want to view all journals in a category, how do I how do I uh, see the full ranking? Sure, that's a great question. So there's a few different ways to do this in the JCR. If you're looking at a profile page for a specific journal, you can simply scroll up to the top uh, and click on one of the category names, which are in purple. This will show you all of the journals in that category and edition. If you want to see the rank for each, you can actually cl uh, click on the customize button that's in the top right, uh, and you can choose which indicators to show. One of these is the GIF rank. You can also use the filters directly from the Browse Journals page uh, and select the categories or editions that you'd like to view. So we have extensive filters uh, in the, the application that you can use to narrow down your search and see different facets um, of a, a particular journal, again, including uh, that GIF rank. Um, and if you're interested in taking a look at the categories as a whole, so we do have a browse categories feature, uh, which is always available at the top banner um, in the application, uh, where you can browse all the categories um, that we have available in the JCR. Okay, very good. So this next question is for both uh, Kate and Nandita. What does journal suppression look like? Would the journal be removed completely and where can I find details about why a journal was suppressed? So I can take that from the product side. So if you are uh, taking a look at a journal in the, the JCR view in the profile page, if the GIF has been suppressed for that year, uh, we will have a notice on the profile page. Um, it is the profile page are year by year. So you can take a look at multiple years if a journal is in the JCR for multiple years. 
Uh, we do still have other metrics for journals where a GIF has been suppressed. The JCI is still available. The open access information is still available. You know, a, a lot of the other data that we have on that journal profile page is still available for those journals. So, Mindy, I don't know if you have anything you want to add I to think that. That comes it comprehensively. Okay. And uh, for journals under evaluation and newly selected for inclusion in ESCI, when will they be eligible for a GIF? And I think that one goes to Nandita. I can take that one. So I'll answer. And this, to make it clear, this isn't just for ESCI journals. Like this is for any um, of the Web of Science core collection indices. So this is for any journal that comes into the Web of Science. So there's two bits to consider. One is when they are eligible to enter the JCR, and the other is when they are then eligible to have a GIF. So any journal that is accepted by the 1st of January is eligible to appear in that year's JCR release. Now, in order for that journal to get a GIF, we need to have sufficient year's content. So if you think about next year's JCR release, the GIF will be calculated by looking at citations in 2023 to content in 2022 and 2021. So that means any journal that was launched in 2023, there's no denominator data. So 2023 launches can't get a GIF. Whereas journals launched in 2022 and prior and accepted into the core collection by the 1st of January this year will both be in, are both eligible to be in next year's JCR release and eligible to get a GIF. Um, so that was our final question. Nandita and Kate, do you have any final thoughts for our attendees uh, today? I'd really encourage everyone to just have a proper rummage around the JCR. There is just so much interesting data, descriptive data and metrics in there. there, there it really is a very, very comprehensive journal intelligence platform. So yeah, go and have a play. Yeah, I would just echo that sentiment. Um, you know, when we talk about having uh, this this comprehensive suite of metrics and profiles, not metrics, there is a tremendous amount of data uh, on the JCR and in these individual profile pages. Uh, so I would just encourage people to spend some time with it uh, and really take a look around. Okay, very well. And so with that, we'll end today. We want to thank Kate and Nandita for an excellent presentation and also thank our attendees for joining us for Journal Citation Reports 2023 Clarity Advances Research. We encourage you to take a few minutes to complete our brief survey, which will automatically appear as you exit the webinar. We'd love to hear your feedback on today's program. And if you're interested in subscribing to Journal Citation Reports, Please ask in the survey to be contacted uh, right away from our team. And with that, we wish everyone a good day, and this will close our session for today. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye.